we'd like to show it to you today for the first time. And we call it the iPad. So John, you were at the event today where Steve Jobs unveiled um, a new Apple computer called the iPad. How does this unveiling compare to previous launches? This compares well. It, you know, I think we as a collective media were far more spun up than uh, Mr. Jobs. He sort of took a but I thought it was a bit of a Zen stance. He was very understated on stage. I mean, lots of superlatives, but um, you know, this prepared, this compared well. But it, I don't think it was, uh, you know, more striking the introduction of Next, for example, or the iPhone, for example, where he had thousands of people in the audience. He obviously, whether he set price expectations or whether we as the media did, he was below the price expectations. So he's got an entry model under $500, and I think that at that price, I think the telling point that he made was that there are 75 million iTouch and iPhone users out there. So there's this built-in market for this product, and I think that he'll sell a lot of them. Do you think, I mean, you mentioned that the basic model, the price is 500 bucks, which is sounds pretty reasonable to us, but for most people that is kind of expensive if you've already got a cell phone and a laptop. I mean, do you think that this will be a device that attracts or that uh, that appeals to a lot of um, mainstream consumers, or will be more for the early adopters, kind of geekier set like you and me? Yeah, I think that that's a, that's a great question. Will it get past the uh, the Apple fanboy uh, audience? And um, uh, God, it clearly it's a great book reader. It's a great way to watch television. Uh, he says it's a great way to surf the web. Um, maybe it's a good way to do email. Uh, and at $500, that probably will get him enough lift to build a, a, a really good market. I mean, there were a couple of things that I noticed were missing that were really quite striking. Um, there was no camera. Uh, there was no camera pointing at me, so there's no video iChat in the first version, which really was, I, I thought, a surprise. I thought that was an obvious application. And the keyboard, um, you know, you saw Steve make a typo, you saw somebody else make a typo. Obviously, it's not the same as having a type, a, a, you know, a regular keyboard. And they have this kind of kludgy stand, which they said would let you type. And uh, that's a tremendous concession from Steve Jobs' point of view, to have that kind of kludgy stand that you're supposed to take to type on. It's hard to imagine, though. I mean, analysts have been talking about all these applications from, you know, construction workers using the iPad as a as a keyboard or a clipboard or students you know, you know using it as a teaching tool or teachers it seems hard to imagine it being you know replacing just a regular keyboard that you're using every day I mean that seems yeah, like it, it, it doesn't that might be challenging. it doesn't but the yeah. question is is good enough until people have it for a month or two they won't they won't know but uh, you know for those kinds of the other thing is that voice is coming along very quickly if you've played with dragon dictator some of the other applications on the iPhone I already routinely use them to uh, to enter uh, text for emails, and they work quite well. And so, if that's the direction things go, and maybe it will matter even less. What do you think about the iPad as a Kindle killer? How worried should Amazon be? I think they should be very worried. I mean, you know, Jeff Bezos wasn't on stage. Martin Niesenholz of the New York Times was on stage. I think that sort of says it all. Is that um, you know, I think it depends on the business relationships and pricing. It's, it's interesting that Jobs called out a special store. He set up a new book reading mm -hmm. store, uh, as opposed to mm -hmm. just putting books in the iPhone, which means he's made it a priority. I actually had an opportunity to talk to Bezos about this a couple of days ago, and I, I think that you know the Kindle reader will be on the iPhone. And so I imagine you'll be able to read your Kindle books, and uh, Bezos may just see it as an opportunity. And then, of course, there are all the other competitors to Apple. Uh, you know, Microsoft will certainly have a product. There will be many of these tablet devices out there. And that's all uh, you know, plenty of opportunity for Jeff Bezos. Are there any big takeaway themes we should think about? Yeah, I mean, I was sort of thinking, I was reflecting on sort of what Steve Jobs does well. And, you know, everybody knows he's a great marketer. But uh, the thing I'd give him a lot of credit for is sort of listening to the technology better than anybody. Um, and if he does get this right, it will be because he understood uh, the convergence of these different technologies well and, and knew the right time to introduce this device. And my guess is he picked the right time. And what this device does is extraordinary. You can browse the web with it. It is the best browsing experience you've ever had.